Hello folks, so welcome back to the SFOM channel and thanks for tuning in. In this particular video we're going to discuss what's in the night sky for the month of August 2020. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So hi folks, in this night sky update we're going to discuss five topics so first of all we're going to talk about near earth objects and in particular of course we're going to talk about the trajectory and location of comet neowise is it still visible in the month of august can we uh, see it from the northern and or the southern hemisphere let's talk about that second of all we're going to talk about the position of the planets and third of all we are also going to talk about the Perseids meteor shower which will peak on the 12th of august and that's really awesome so let's talk about that as well Fourth of all, we're going to talk about some deep sky objects that are visible in the month of August for both the northern and the southern hemisphere. And last but certainly not least, we're going to talk about the hashtag NSSVO on Instagram. Uh, you have shared a lot of pictures using my hashtag NSSVO. So again, thank you so much for sharing all of your hard work. And we will look at some beautiful pictures that, that were sent in during the month of July. So without further ado, let's Let's get into that first topic, Comet Neowise. So Comet Neowise was actually an amazing sight in July. This was actually the first comet ever that I saw with the naked eye. And um, thank you so much for sending in a lot of beautiful pictures using the hashtag NSSFO, Night Sky Astro Forum. Thank you so much for sharing these pictures with me. And of course, I myself, I was also very excited and I tried to make some wide field pictures of Comet Neowise uh, using my Canon M50. This is just my vlog camera which I'm, uh, with which I'm recording this video right now. But what's in store for August? Can we still image Comet Neowise? And the answer to that is yes. But uh, if you are living in the Northern Hemisphere, you have to be quick. Uh, because you have to realize that uh, yeah, Comet Neowise is actually past uh, perihelion. So it is uh, it has completed its orbit around the Sun and now it will move further and further away from the Sun and also further away from Earth. And uh, for the Northern Hemisphere this means that Comet Neowise will be visible in uh, the North Northwest uh, just after sunset but it will move closer and closer towards the horizon. And um, yeah, if you have uh, trouble locating Comet Neowise, just look at a very bright star in the North Northwest. Um, uh, this star is called Arcturus or Arcturus. And uh, just find that bright star and then below this bright star, you will be able to locate Comet Neowise. Now for the Southern Hemisphere, it's actually a completely different story because yeah, uh, during the months of August, uh, Comet Neowise will actually also appear as an evening comet, so just after sunset in the north northwest, so in the same direction. Um, but actually, it will climb higher and higher in the night sky just after sunset um, in August in the southern hemisphere. Just also look towards the star Arcturus, and in the vicinity of that star, you should be able to spot Comet Neowise. And so, I'm expecting actually a lot of beautiful pictures coming from the Southern Hemisphere enthusiasts as well. So um, I'm really looking forward to seeing some nice uh, pictures from the Southern Hemisphere of Comet Neowise. And uh, yeah, let's move on to the positions of the planet. So for both the Northern and the Southern Hemisphere, Venus will appear as a morning star in the night sky. Just look towards the Northeast and uh, just before sunrise you will be able to spot Venus. Uh, as for Saturn and Jupiter, they are just past their opposition, but they are still clearly visible in the night sky. So when you are in the northern hemisphere, just look towards the southeast, uh, um, where Jupiter and Saturn will be at the uh, after sunset, and then they will travel towards the south southwest during the night. And for the southern hemisphere, of course, you have to look towards the northeast, and Jupiter and Saturn will then travel towards the north north west during the night and also Mars will be visible it will be rising in the east after midnight and it will climb higher in the night sky and of, of course it will climb towards the south when you are in the northern hemisphere and Mars will climb towards the north when you are in the southern hemisphere so let's discuss the Perseids meteor shower 
So one thing you definitely don't want to miss guys in the month of August is of course the annual Perseids Meteor Shower. Its peak will be on the 12th of August, so write that down, the 12th of August. And it will provide you with up to 150 meteors per hour when you are in the Northern Hemisphere. In the Southern Hemisphere the number of meteors are a little bit less intense but still well worth watching. And these meteors are actually leftover debris from Comet uh, 109P with Tuttle and uh, also what is really nice this year is that the moon will be in its third phase so we don't have a lot of moonlight uh, which will give us a better view on those meteors so write it down in your agenda the 12th of August uh, the Perseids meteor shower let's also talk about the nice deep sky objects that are out there in the night sky in the month of August 2020. Uh, let's start with the southern hemisphere and I thought it would be fun to also provide you this live view of Stellarium. So let's get into Stellarium here and you can see that just after sunset the uh, Milky Way will be clearly visible in the northeast and during the night you can see that the Milky Way will travel towards the northwest. And uh, yeah, within the Milky Way, of course, we have some incredible nebulae that you, uh, you could uh, image. And one of my personal favorites always uh, is the Eagle Nebula. Because the Eagle Nebula, it provides you with a nice wide field view of that nebula. But if you have maybe a telescope with a longer focal length, you can really zoom in and then also try to catch the pillars of creation. So that is really nice. Um, I'm actually capturing the Eagle Nebula right now. Um, also this small Sagittarius star cloud is visible and the Lagoon Nebula uh, as well as the Trivet Nebula just uh, below the Lagoon Nebula. They are of course really incredible um, nebulae to catch as well. And then of course when we are moving towards the, uh, the south I'm a little bit less familiar with those nebulae. Um, but you can clearly see that uh, there's also this Butterfly Cluster, the Lobster Nebula and there was also the Pearl Nebula I saw. The Prawl Nebula over here, so um, I would guess, and this NGC, what is it, 6193, also I think this is an incredible uh, nebula to image when you are in the Southern Hemisphere. So let's also take a look at these the Magellanic Clouds. So um, here you can uh, clearly see the small and the large Magellanic Clouds. Uh, just after sunset they will be visible in the south. And they will rise in the night sky during the night in the south. So that's pretty incredible. And also let's check up on the Eta Carina Nebula. So just after sunset the Eta Carina Nebula will be uh, low in the southwestern sky. And then oh it will be very close to the horizon. So you would need uh, really uh, yeah, like an unobstructed view towards the south in order to catch uh, the Eta Carina Nebula. So it would not be a very good time to image it at this point, I think. So let's take a look at the Northern Hemisphere as well. So as for the Northern Hemisphere, just after sunset, you will be able to spot the Milky Way in the south, as you can see over here. And then the Milky Way will travel towards the southwest west during the night. And um, yeah, of course, um, we, that this provides us with the similar opportunities to catch these beautiful nebulae uh, I mentioned uh, before. So you can see here that the Lagoon Nebula and the Trivet Nebula, they are actually pretty close towards the horizon, as you can see. So you would need an unobstructed view towards the south in order to image those nebulae. And a little bit higher up in the in the south south sky, so the night sky is the Sagittarius star cloud, and of course also the Eagle Nebula I've mentioned before with the pillars of creation, very nice target to image. And when we move a little bit higher up in the sky, of course, um, yeah, a very famous object is also the Dumbbell Nebula here. It's not uh, very large, but a very nice planetary nebula that you will be able to image. And of course, uh, still pretty high up in the night sky, we have the constellation Swan with a lot of nice objects everybody knows. So the Northern uh, North America Nebula, uh, the Pelican Nebula over here, and over, we have this nebulous uh, region around the star Sutter with the Crescent Nebula. And a little bit below that, we will have the we have the Eastern Veil and the Western Veil uh, Nebula. Um, 7,000 year old supernova explosion, so pretty awesome to, uh, to be able to image those as well. And of course the Elephant Trunk Nebula is a little bit more towards the east. 
and the, the Wizard Nebula also pretty popular. And maybe finally, you can also be a little bit early if you want to catch the Andromeda Galaxy. So the closest galaxy um, to our own Milky Way. It's actually rising in August in the northeast east in the night sky. Um, and so yeah, for those of you who want to image on the Andromeda, you can start uh, in, during the month of August already. So last but certainly not least, I wanted to thank you again for all of the incredible pictures that you shared with me using the hashtag NSASFO, so Night Sky Astro Forum. On Instagram, we are close to 200 pictures, so that's really incredible. And it was incredibly difficult to select a couple of them. So I selected four, uh, but if you are interested in all the pictures, just go to hashtag NSASFO and you will be able to see some awesome astrophotography pictures. So first of all, uh, I wanted to, uh, to share this picture with you of Maciek Astrophoto. And actually, I like these wide field pictures of Comet Neowise. You, could re you can really see then how bright this comet was in the night sky. So this is taken uh, during twilight. Uh, he used a Nikon uh, Z7 here and a Sigma 135 millimeter lens. And this is just a four second exposure at ISO, ISO 400. So you can really see how incredibly bright this comet is in the night sky at the moment. It's really, really nice. Uh, nice picture, thank you so much uh, Maciek for sharing this picture. So the second picture is from Maurizio Cristiano de Souza, if I pronounce your name correctly, or Astro Mar Mau Souza <laughs> from Brazil. And this is actually an incredible picture of the Carina Nebula, uh, three hours, a narrowband picture, three hours for each of the filters used. And actually he has a very similar setup as I do. So an EQ6R Pro, Skywatcher EQ6R Pro mount with an 80 millimeter APO uh, Meet uh, 6000 series uh, triplet refractor and his ZWO ASI 1600 Mono Pro camera. Ah, I really have to travel sometime to the Southern Hemisphere uh, in order to also get, try to catch this incredible Carina Nebula. It looks fantastic. Thank you very much uh, for sharing this uh, picture with us, uh, Maurizio. And another, this is a Spanish uh, fo Fotografia Nocturna, if I pronounce that correctly, uh, picture of NGC 6188 or the Dragones de Ara. <laughs> okay, my, my Spanish needs a little bit of work probably. Um, but I really like this, also taken with the ZWO 1600 Mono Pro camera. And uh, you can see here, uh, the Red Cat is used as a telescope. Um, and these are actually five minute pictures uh, of HA03 and S2 uh, stacked. And yeah, I really like here the, the, the beautiful um, yeah, structure of the nebula. It really uh, shows all of the clouds and all of the stars. So I, I really just really like this picture. So thank you very much uh, Fotografia Nocturna for sharing this picture with us. And I want to end with Galactic Johnny because Galactic Johnny, he, he uh, decided to really zoom in on the uh, Elephant Trunk Nebula. He just used the Canon EOS 50D, a modified uh, DSLR camera. Um, yeah, with his uh, Celestron C8. Yeah, if you have uh, like a Smith Cassegrain Celestron C8, you can also catch some beautiful close ups of uh, the nebulae that are out there in the night sky. So, thank you very much, uh, Galactic Johnny, for, um, yeah, for sharing this beautiful close up of the Elephant Trunk Nebula with us. So, we're at the end of the video. I hope you liked it. I hope you got some value out of this video. If you did, please consider giving this video a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to my channel. And of course, I hope to see you again in one of my other videos. And until then, I want to wish you clear skies. Bye bye.